Welcome to the revised edition of the North Penn Legal Services Custody and Visitation Video Workshop. The purpose of the video is to provide basic information about how a child custody dispute may be handled by the courts or through negotiation or mediation. In the next 30 minutes or so, we will define some of the key legal terms, such as legal custody and physical custody. We will also examine some of the factors parents must consider in deciding whether or not to file a custody lawsuit. We will then look at several common situations involved in child custody. And finally, we will describe what happens once a custody lawsuit is started. Can you file papers without a lawyer? Where do you file your papers? When is the hearing? What happens at the hearing? Who makes the decision? Of course, no two custody cases are exactly alike, and the law can change. There is no certain way to predict the results of your case. The video is meant to provide basic information only, which should not be taken as legal advice. We sincerely hope that you and the other persons involved in a child custody dispute are able to reach a fair resolution which is in the best interests of the child, whether by negotiation, conciliation, or a court trial. Many people believe they know a little bit about custody law and they are quite willing to offer you their opinions. Perhaps your neighbor or cousin has told you that the judge always gives custody to the mother, or fathers always win, or maybe you were told that a 12-year-old gets to choose where to live. These are examples of street law, which is usually wrong. Every case is different, and what happened to Cousin Jane or your friend Bill might not happen to your case. Let's look at some of the key terms used in custody law. Best interests of the child. This is what judges must determine in making a custody ruling. It represents all the factors a judge must consider when making a decision, including the circumstances and environment of each parent's household, the child's preference, work schedules, and many others. Legal custody. This is the right to be informed about and participate in major decisions affecting the child's physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Most custody orders provide for shared legal custody so that both parents are involved in these major issues. Physical custody. This means the right to have the child without any restrictions or supervision. It can be sole or shared. Sole custody. This means no one else can have the child. Primary custody. This is the right to have the child most of the time. Partial custody. This is the right to have the child some of the time, what most people call visitation. Supervised visitation. This is when a person does not have the right to have the child unless visits are supervised. It is very important to keep these terms in mind as you watch the video, prepare for your hearing, or attempt to carry out the specific terms of an order or agreement. They should also be helpful to you if you and the other party decide to try mediation or to work out your own agreement. Sometimes when parents break up, separate or divorce, they are able to make their own custody and visitation plans or schedules. They take into account each other's wishes, interests, work schedules, and lifestyles as well as the needs and wishes of the children. If you and the other parent of your child think you can create your own workable plan and do not need a court order, you and the child are indeed fortunate. Good morning. Hello, Mrs. Smith. My name is Ann Targonski. Have a seat. Thank you. Thanks for seeing me today. You're welcome. I understand that you're here. You want to discuss a custody lawsuit? Yes. My husband and I have been separated for seven months. We were arguing all the time, and the kids and I finally moved to my parents' house, and he stayed in New Jersey. Were you and your husband able to work out a custody schedule? Well, we tried, and for a while it worked, but we argued about it a lot. The kids are in a lot of activities, and sometimes they just didn't want to go to New Jersey for the weekend. Have you agreed on a set schedule? We can't. His work keeps changing. Sometimes he wants the kids when I have things scheduled, and 
Then he won't come when he says. Are things getting worse? Much worse. He started threatening to keep the kids, and he found out I was seeing someone, and he's always wanting to bring that up. He's beginning to scare me. If things break down at this point in time, you may need to file a custody lawsuit, something that will tell you both what you can and can't do. A court order will set forth a specific schedule for you to follow. Where can I file a custody lawsuit? In Pennsylvania, all custody lawsuits must be filed in the county courts, which are called the Courts of Common Pleas. Generally, the lawsuit must be filed in the state and county where the child has lived for the last six months, or where an existing custody order was filed, even if that is in another state. There are exceptions to this rule. Mrs. Smith, exactly when did you leave New Jersey? It will be eight months and a week. And have you lived with your parents in this county ever since? No, I, I found a place a couple blocks away after I had been there about a month. Are you sure neither you or your husband have filed for custody either in this county or in New Jersey? No, we'd never been separated. We were married for 10 years. Well, how long did you live in New Jersey? It was eight years. All three of our kids were born there. Well, I believe that you can file for custody here. You ha and the children have lived in this county, in the Commonwealth, for at least six months. How do I file a custody lawsuit? If you are unable to hire an attorney to file a custody lawsuit, you can do it on your own. Many courts have forms available for you to file pro se, which means on your own. The Monroe County Bar Association also has a law referral service. For $25, you can at least speak to a private attorney about your legal matter. You may then have to pay for additional services. The number of the Monroe County Bar Association is 570-424-7288. The Monroe County Office of the Prothonotary is on the third floor of the Monroe County Courthouse and is located at 7th and Monroe Streets, a block north of Main Street in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. They have forms to file for child custody, to file a petition for contempt for violating a custody order, as well as a petition to modify an existing custody order. North Penn Legal Services also provides free services for low-income individuals, and there is a website found at palawhelp.org, which is operated by the statewide legal aid program. This would help to draft a computer-generated custody complaint form as well as a form asking to waive the filing fee if you are unable to pay for the filing fees. You can apply for services at North Penn Legal Services by calling the intake number at 1-877-953-4250. Hello, my name is Steve Higgins and I'm a Monroe County Custody Conciliator. In our county, we have four conciliators who handle child custody cases. Conciliators are attorneys who have practiced for many years, and while we may practice law in other areas, we do not practice child custody cases while serving as a custody conciliator. Our purpose is to help the court manage family court and child custody cases more efficiently. In our family court system, there are two levels of custody litigation. The first level is a conciliation conference, which is held in front of a conciliator like myself. The second level involves a full evidentiary hearing, or what some refer to as a custody trial, which takes place in front of a judge. However, the majority of cases are resolved at the first level with a conciliator and do not require an expensive and sometimes painful custody trial. There are two reasons for holding a conciliation conference. The first is to give uh, the parties a chance to reach a formal settlement. It may be that the parties have never been able to sit down and come to an agreement about custody arrangement. The conciliation conference allows that to happen in a safe environment with someone like myself who handles custody disputes on a daily basis. Sometimes it just helps to have someone else in the room who can make suggestions to help the parties resolve an issue and make an agreement. In fact, if an agreement is reached, the conciliator will prepare a report 
called a recommendation and forward it to the judge for approval as a court order. Such an order must be followed by the parties and sanctions may be imposed if the order is violated. The second reason for a conciliation conference is to expedite the process and allow the parties to resolve their custody issues faster. Even if the parties don't agree, it allows for an interim custody order to be issued so that a shared custody arrangement can be put in place pending a custody trial. So what happens at the conciliation conference? First, the conference in Monroe County is not a trial. You will be in a conference room and not in a courtroom. The moving party, or the party requesting the conference, must make sure the other party is notified of the conference. You should bring proof with you that you provided notice, usually a signed green card showing service by certified mail is sufficient. You must also register and attend the co-parent education program. This is a mandatory program that can help the parties resolve many of the issues at or even before the custody conciliation conference. Once the conference is scheduled, the parties will be ordered to appear in the conciliation room of the Monroe County Courthouse. Since we schedule many conferences each day, it is important to be on time. If a party receives notice of a conference and does not appear or shows up very late, the conference will proceed and they could lose important rights. Sometimes if a party lives far away, arrangements can be made with the conciliator to participate by phone. However, you must have advanced permission. When you get to the actual conference, the setting is informal and we usually sit around a large table. Everyone will get a chance to speak, but only one at a time, so it's important to listen to the other side. Conferences are scheduled every 45 minutes to an hour and uh, generally uh, last no longer. An attorney can be helpful during the conference, but is not required by the court. You should have a plan in mind about your child and what you think is the best arrangement for sharing custody. Acting negative or hostile towards the other party is not helpful and can actually hurt your case. The conciliator is usually looking to hear that the parties are willing to cooperate with each other and strive to co-parent their child. The conciliator may meet with the attorneys, parties, and children. If the conciliator does speak to the child, any statements are strictly confidential. The conciliator may also order home study and psychological evaluations and also drug or alcohol evaluations if needed. The conciliator will encourage the parties to decide on a custody arrangement because experience shows that agreements made by the parties usually work better than those made by a conciliator or a judge. However, if an agreement cannot be reached, the conciliator will prepare a recommendation resulting in an interim order. This order will remain in effect until the custody trial, if a trial is necessary. The information from the home study and psychological evaluation, drug or alcohol evaluations, will be presented to the judge. Obviously, this can be very expensive. At the present time, it costs each party about $1,500 to complete all of these evaluations, which doesn't include the cost of attorney's fees for a custody trial. Given the cost and uncertainty of a custody trial, it is important for the parties to try hard to resolve their case at the conciliation conference. So that's a quick overview of the conciliation process in Monroe County, Pennsylvania. Hello, I'm Judge Art Zulick. I'm a judge here in Monroe County, Pennsylvania. I, along with Judges Jonathan Mark and Jennifer harlocker Sebum, decide the custody cases filed in our county. This video is designed to help you better understand what's involved in a custody case here and understand how a custody case is decided in our county court system. A custody case begins when a parent or a family member files a complaint for custody with our prothonotary, who is our clerk of court. After a custody complaint is filed, both parents are required under our rules to attend a co-parent education program before they come to the courthouse for a custody hearing. The purpose of this class is to give you some insight into the best ways to work with the other parent in the most important job in your life, raising your children in a way that keeps them safe and well cared for and allows them to pursue the goals and dreams that you and they have for their lives. When parents are separated, they may not live together anymore 
but they remain partners in raising their children until the children reach 18. After you have attended our co-parent education class, the court will hold what we call a conciliation conference. There, an attorney experienced in custody law will hold a meeting to discuss your custody situation with you and the other parent or family member involved in the custody case. He or she will try to help you reach an agreement with the other parent that makes sense for all concerned and is in the best interests of your children. Most custody cases are resolved this way in Monroe County. If you reach an agreement, the conciliator will put that in writing and it will be forwarded to a judge for review and signature. When the judge signs that recommendation, you have a custody order that each parent may rely upon. You will attend this conference with your attorney if you have one or by yourself if you don't. No testimony will be taken, but the conciliator will listen carefully to you and to your attorney as well as the other parent's position. If you do not reach a final agreement during your conciliation, the conciliator will make what we call an interim recommendation. This means that he or she will suggest a proposed custody schedule to the judge to be followed by you until you have your custody trial. Many times, parents who receive an interim order will come to accept that schedule and will continue to use that order as the custody order without the need for an actual trial before a judge. Sometimes the custody conciliator will recommend that parents attend custody mediation. This is another procedure where parents meet with a custody mediator who is trained to help parents reach an agreement on custody issues. There may be multiple sessions scheduled with the mediator who is paid by both parents. If the parties are successful in reaching an agreement through the mediator, the mediator will prepare an agreement to be forwarded to the court for signature. It then becomes your custody order, which you have an obligation to follow and upon which you may rely. In a small number of cases, parents simply can't come to an agreement or accept the schedule established by the conciliator. Those cases will come to hearing before a judge. There are many good reasons for you to try your best to avoid turning the final custody decision over to a judge rather than working things out between the parents. Let's talk about some of those. First, the trial route may be difficult for all family members and oftentimes it's hardest on your children. I will interview the children as part of the case and I'll do that in my chambers where we are now where we try to make the children feel more comfortable than in the courtroom. The parents aren't present, but my court reporter and the attorneys are. And after I greet your children and ask them the questions that I have, the attorneys also have that opportunity under my direct supervision. Some children are able to talk freely to me and usually leave me with the impression that they love both their parents. Most don't like being put in the middle of their parents' dispute. Some children are very traumatized by the process, and I've had children who couldn't say a word or cried uncontrollably when we tried to talk to them. It's definitely not an experience you want to put your children through if you can resolve your differences with the other parent through negotiation, conciliation, or mediation. The custody trial has other drawbacks. You'll probably find that it is expensive if you're paying for your attorney. The custody trial may cost thousands of dollars because the attorney has to prepare witnesses and exhibits for the trial, and the trial will take most of a day, sometimes multiple days. Many attorneys' hourly rates are $150 per hour or more. These expenses can add up very quickly. If you're representing yourself, you may be at a significant disadvantage. The law says that you must follow our custody laws and rules of court just as an attorney does. If you don't know those rules, you could have serious problems in properly presenting your case. The judge is not allowed to act as your lawyer or to help you follow proper procedures. The judge is neutral and cannot be partial to either side. If you are going to trial, I will probably be ordering home studies where an independent person, often from Catholic Social Services, will come to meet you and inspect your home to give me some background about you and where you and the children live. These studies cost several hundred dollars. It is possible I'll have you meet with a psychologist too for a psychological evaluation. If each family member is evaluated, this can be quite expensive, even if the cost is divided between the parties. Another reason to try and avoid the custody trial is risk. 
The two people in the world most interested and most knowledgeable about your children are you, the parents or the grandparents if they are the parties. You know their likes and dislikes, their needs, their abilities, their positive attributes, and their shortcomings. So the best two people to make decisions about your children's lives are you, the parents. When you use the custody trial to resolve your differences, you're turning the ultimate decision about the contact you will have with your children over to a stranger, me, or another of our judges. You're rolling the dice with your own life and that of your children. Not the best way to make that decision if you're able to avoid it. You should be talking to your attorney about the likely outcomes of the custody trial. Your attorney will be able to tell you what the reasonable possibilities are about the custody decision. If you're able to make an agreement that falls within that reasonable range of outcomes, that is surely preferable to taking your chances in the trial. Keep in mind that if both parents are fit, they both have a right to be involved in raising their children. A court will usually not give great amounts of time to you and very little to the other parent. Speaking for myself, I believe that both parents must have generous amounts of time with their children, and no one comes into court as the preferred parent. Only in somewhat unusual circumstances would a parent's access to the children be severely limited. A child has the right to know both parents, and many parents, unfortunately, confuse their own best interests and needs with those of their children. My decision on custody is based on what I see to be the best interests of the children, not those of the parents. Also, don't forget that a custody order is never written in stone. If circumstances change, even if you've spent days in a custody trial to get your custody order, it may be necessary to deal with modifications to the order as time goes on, and these disputes may lead to more litigation and future custody trials until the children are 18. Also consider that a judge may attach conditions to custody, such as requiring a parent to attend counseling or anger management classes or to limit the use of alcohol around the children. You may not like or agree with some of these conditions, such as the location for custody exchanges or transportation arrangements. You may be limited in allowing certain third parties to have access to children. These are all conditions that may arise depending on the facts of your case, but the point is you won't have control of what they are. Finally, keep in mind that the judge has to make his or her decision based only upon a snapshot of your lives that he or she receives after spending a day or two with you during the custody trial. Sometimes when you've done everything you can to establish a reasonable schedule with the other parent and you aren't able to reach a meeting of the minds, you may need a decision by a judge. However, if you're able to resolve a part of your custody dispute, that is helpful to all concerned. Let's say you're able to work out the schedule for the weekend or regular weekday custody, but you're having difficulty in figuring out what to do with holidays or where the custody exchange should be. You can agree before the judge on some points and ask the judge to decide those things that are up in the air. That may save you a lot of time, frustration and expense. The more you, the parents, work out about your custody case, the better. If you are going to trial, what are some of the factors that the custody judge considers? As I've said, the overarching standard that the judge will apply is what is in your child's best interests. To decide that, the judge will be looking at important facts you and your witnesses bring out in the trial. Some of these principles are which parent has been the primary provider for the children's needs during their lifetimes, and most importantly in recent years. The fact that you are the mother or the father of the children does not matter in and of itself. The court is not allowed to apply a presumption based upon gender. Each parent stands on his or her own merits. The child's preference is important, but it is not the child's decision. It is the judge's decision. As a child gets older, his or her preference may receive more weight in the judge's decision, but it will depend on the reasons expressed for the preference. If the preference is because one parent lets the teenage child go unsupervised and isn't paying attention to the responsibility of raising the child, that preference probably will not carry much weight. Also, the decision remains the judge's until the child is 18. Just because a child is 13 or 14 and has a preference, doesn't necessarily mean that it will carry the day in the custody decision. 
It is one factor that will be considered by the court. There is a principle in custody law to keep brothers and sisters together. Important reasons would have to be present to break up siblings. Which parent is most likely to encourage contact and free communication with the other parent? This is an important factor, again, because the court wants children to have good relationships with both their parents and their families. Does one parent offer a more stable and secure environment for the children? I'm not talking about which parent has the higher income here, but which parent provides a home more suited for the child's health and success in school and at home. Our court system is designed to give you some education and to assist you as best we can in obtaining a custody order that is in the best interest of your children. We encourage you to work with the other parent to do that and to use as much of our custody dispute resolution tools as you need to obtain an order that makes sense for your children. We sincerely hope that this custody video will help you decide to do what is best for you and your children. Of course, the information contained in this video must be quite general in nature and must not be considered to be legal advice. Every case is different and we cannot predict how your case will turn out.